Hey guys, it is Michelle and I am here to talk about the latest four things that I have read. Usually it's three, but one of these was a short story, so I thought I'd just lump them all in together. First, I finished A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. It was my third book by her, and it starts off with a bang. You've got this main character, Kel, and he can travel between alternative Londons, and to help him he has this jacket that he can turn inside out, but it doesn't just have two sides. It has more sides than that, and so it's a magical item, and when it's turned to different sides, it has different pockets, and it's just kind of a fascinating way to kick it off. You find out that only a very few people can travel between the Londons, and they each kind of report to a ruler of a London and carry messages back and forth and letters and that kind of thing. But it is forbidden to transport items. Of course, Kel transports an item, and it causes a a big issue for him. Uh, so I really loved the world building and I loved the way the novel took off, but it got kind of boring for me in the center and I had trouble continuing reading. I went ahead and, and pushed through it, but I had trouble with how little explanation there was for the, the backstory of how the Londons got this way and the backstory of the magic system. Now, I will be the first to admit that this is probably a result of this book suffering by comparison to the Mistborn trilogy because Brandon Sanderson just gives you such a sandbox of different ideas and how things work and um, just you can just kind of put ideas together and sometimes you do figure out what's going on and sometimes you don't. But I just really, after reading something like the Mistborn Trilogy, just this style of, okay, this is just all you're going to get for now and just accept it and go on. Um, explanation of the magic in the story. I just, it just didn't sit well with me and I ended up giving this two stars. So sadly, I was disappointed and probably won't be continuing on with that series. But I did really enjoy the Archived and Vicious, so I'm not giving up on this author just this series isn't for me unless it like takes a turn for awesomeness later. So I'll be watching other booktube reviews and see if um, maybe I want to give it a second chance in the future. Then I read The Girl with the Magic Hands by Nettie Okorafor. This is a short story and I wanted to investigate this author's writing style because there's a novel of hers that I'm interested in reading. But for some reason I was kind of hesitant to pick up the novel. I guess because it's got such low ratings on Goodreads I was a little bit afraid. I love the premise of the novel. It's called Lagoon, but I wanted to check out her writing style, and I adored this uh, short story. It's about a young girl who lives in a village, and she's just kind of sad and melancholy, and her parents don't, like, save her life either, and so um, she's just kind of ho-hum about life, and then she has an encounter with some beings. I'm going to call it a magical realism encounter. And they introduce her to a style of art. And she starts practicing this kind of art. And it really has a positive impact on her and the people around her and all the people in the village. And it was just a very cute and uplifting kind of a story. And over the next few days, when it would pop back into my mind, I realized it was not just a simple story. There were some layers there that you could peel back and find some more meaning, and I love that about books. So I will definitely pe be picking up Lagoon by Nettie Okorafor in the future, but I gave The Girl with the Magic Hands a four-star rating on Goodreads. Then I had a very impulsive moment, and I bought a short story collection called Moms Are Nuts, and I hadn't been interested in short stories until this year. And this is just supposed to be funny stories about moms, and we were about a month away from Mother's Day, and... I thought, you know, why not? My first short story collection that I read turned out just wonderfully. And uh, this one, not so much. It was an enjoyable read, but there just weren't any stories that were like really stand out. And if you ask me like, oh, tell me about one of the stories, I don't think I could do that. Um, so there are certain things that occasionally will remind me of one of the stories, but just to retell one of the stories, I don't think I could do it. It was funny. They are very short. They're easy to get through. So if you don't like the style of one or um, whatever, they're they're very quick to get through. And it, like I said, it was enjoyable, but just not super enjoyable. So it was okay. Three stars. Did I say that already? I probably said that. Okay. And the last thing I read was Regulation 19 by P.T. Hilton. And 
This is a speculative fiction novel, and it's kind of a mashup of horror and sci-fi. I guess horror and sci-fi. There's really there really aren't many fantastical elements. Yeah, there kind of are. So it's just kind of a big mishmash of genres. So I'm going to call it speculative fiction, and it is fast-paced. And you really care about the characters right away. Your main character is Frank Hinkle. He has spent the last nine years in prison and he unexpectedly gets released. And when he does, he figures out strange things are going on in the town he is from. Um, people are acting weird. Their personalities have changed. His brother disappeared about seven years ago and no one told him. Um, there, some of his buddies are dead. People die fairly frequently in the town, and there's this town council, and it has a leader, and it has a really religious cult feel to it. And although they're not laws, they have these regulations in place. You can't do this, or you can't do that, and you can't do this. And it's all in the name of supposedly protecting the town, but one of the regulations is you can't leave town unless you have this special training. It is just... So interesting. There are so many unique ideas, or at least unique to me. I had never heard anything like most of these ideas before. That it was just fascinating, and the character development is great. The plot moves along. It's got action. You're wondering what's going on, and you have enough idea of what's going on to make some guesses, but sometimes they're not correct and something totally different is going on. So it was just really, really enjoyable. There are a ton of characters in this, and that would be my one complaint was... Occasionally, I would not forget, like, the, what the character's kind of role in the story was, but I would sometimes forget which name was which, and so I would have to go back. Luckily, I was reading it on my Kindle, so I could quickly go back and, like, oh, yeah, who was Todd? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so once I, you know, just read two or three words on that after searching for Todd, I was fine, and I knew exactly what was going on. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, and pick right back up, so... That would be my one complaint is I did have trouble remembering some of the names because there were so many characters. And in the author's defense, Todd uh, was never alive during the story. He was only spoken of at, at, as a deceased person. So that's probably why I couldn't remember Todd. But there are a ton of characters in this. And it was just super enjoyable. I gave it four stars on Goodreads. And P.T. Hilton is a fellow booktuber. So I will link his booktube channel below if you're interested in checking that out. I'm a subscriber. I love his channel. So love his thoughts and ideas, and I went, hey, if he's written a novel, I'd probably enjoy it. I will definitely be picking up book two in this series. I believe the series is called Deadlock. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching, and happy reading.